Hi guys, um, it is a never-ending story that volcanic system in Iceland on the Reykjanes Peninsula is repeating itself, it seems, very, very soon. And uh, the weird thing is, I don't want to say funny because I'm beyond that. The weird thing is, if you look at the headlines at the morning newspaper in Iceland today on the 5th, March the 5th, so the headline is and they're right underneath each other headline all blue lagoon establishments are open they just reopened yesterday and then the next headline an eruption could begin at very short notice less than 30 minutes next headline the magma chamber didn't relieve any pressure not much pressure it's ready to cause another event so absolutely weird i have just released a video about this with a statement from the blue lagoon guys check it out i'll put it in the end screen for you to watch <laughs> whoever's following that saga and that soap opera definitely watch that video but what is the topic of this video i want to give you an overview of what is going on because we have some news about how much magma did flow on sunday on march 2nd how much magma did flow out of the magma chamber and remember if you've seen my last video i said that is what i want to know because then we can estimate when has the magma chamber reached the same level that it had on march 2nd so they are saying the eruption could begin at a very short notice because the magma chamber underneath the Swartzengi area, that's the area where the power plant is located, where the Blue Lagoon is located. There is another hotel, the Northern Lights Inn. So that is north of Grindavik. It's basically still considered part of Grindavik. Yeah. Magma is rising, magma chamber is filling up, and it could result in a new magma flow or an eruption. Remember the last three times we have seen an eruption, and it could start at any time with even less than 30 minutes notice. And remember we had on March 2nd the earthquake swarm. It took the Blue Lagoon 40 minutes to evacuate. It took Grindavik an hour to evacuate. So not enough time to evacuate before an eruption will begin if there is an eruption and not just another magma flow. And here comes the interesting part. The Icelandic Met Office, the Icelandic Metrological Office, has released the number just today. How much did flow out of that magma chamber underneath the Swartzengi area? And they are saying it has been 1.3 million cubic meters and so we know that the land is rising that magma chamber it is filling up and by filling up and by expanding it lifts up the land on top of it so the land in Swartzengi is rising constantly every day and it has been filling up the magma chamber has been filling up with roughly 500,000 cubic meters per day. So two and a half days worth of magma has flown out on March 2nd. So today is March 5th. So we are back at the same level that it had when that event happened. So that's why they're saying another event can happen at any time. This is interesting and that's why I do not understand when they evacuated the Blue Lagoon and Grindavik, what has changed since then, right? It can happen at any time. Do we have to take that risk? I really have to ask, do they have to do that? Um, it seems they have to. So the probability for a new magma run or a potential eruption is very high, usually, we did see an event when the magma chamber has reached a capacity between 8 and 13 million cubic meters. And that's why they're saying it is imminent because we're basically we're roughly at about 9 million cubic meters between 8 and 9 million cubic meters. And guys, since we're in the middle of the video, could you do me a favor? Leave this video a like and if you can watch it until the end and now back to the video. There have been 
eruptions at the Fagradalsfjall system. And what the experts are saying, what they have learned from these eruptions is that magma can come to the surface, that lava can flow out without much seismic activity. That's what happened after repeated eruptions at Fagradalsfjall. So this could happen here now too. So maybe there won't be a big earthquake swarm that would give a warning ahead of the eruption or the magma intrusion. And the weather has been very, very bad and that impacts the measuring the seismic instruments that could give that warning. So if the weather is bad, they don't really feel the smaller earthquakes. And these events usually come with a cluster swarm of smaller earthquakes. So that increases the danger level because that reduces the warning time significantly, really significantly. So that is something we have to keep in mind. And the magma flow was a very small one, right? So not much has flown out. So that's why the situation on the Reykjanes Peninsula is basically unchanged. It is like we are before the next event and it'll happen in a few days. That's what basically the estimates are. So this flow that we have seen on Sunday doesn't impact the timing for the next event. So it's basically we're still before the next larger event event. So there is a professor, Paul Einerson, he's a professor emeritus at the Faculty of Earth Sciences of the University um, of Iceland. And he basically said today that the situation that we're in right now is the same situation that we were in last weekend. The volcanic system, the magma chamber has recovered very quickly after the weekend, after the event. The magma run that we have seen on the weekend, the magma did flow out of the magma chamber and it stopped then at the Hagafell area. So they think it is clogged somewhere, but it is impossible to say what will happen in the next few days. No one can say whether there will be another magma intrusion or whether there will be an eruption. Also, these magma runs, they can come at all sizes from being very small to being very large, and they really can't predict that. Overall, all the events that have taken place in the Reykjanes Peninsula so far, they, these eruptions and intrusions, they're relatively small. If you compare them, for example, to the Kafla eruption, that was the Krafla eruption was way more large. These events are relatively small and that means that the time between them is often quite short because not much is going out of the magma chamber. The one that we have seen last weekend was the smallest that we've seen so far. So that makes the time between the event shorter and it depends on the size of the magma that gets out of the chamber, that's what defines the recovery time, the time the system needs to recover to build up pressure for the next event. So at the moment, it seems there is no end to the refilling of that magma chamber underneath Swart Sangi. So they are saying, and remember that I said that before, right? These events will repeat, but it is difficult to predict how long these events will repeat. They're definitely going to repeat while that magma chamber keeps still filling up. And it is at full strength at the moment, but you know, there are examples of other volcanic systems where something like this can end very quickly. And wouldn't that be awesome? Although they have made the prediction that the Reykjanes Peninsula might be active for decades, even centuries. So he is sure that the chain of these events can and will end at some point. But exactly when, it is absolutely impossible to predict. Benedict Gunnar of Feikson, he's the professional director of deformation measurements at the Icelandic Metrological Office, also calls the last magma intrusion a very minor event. And that's why he thinks that the next event will happen this week. Um, he says that, you know, when you 
um, compare it to the February 8th eruption. The last weekend's intrusion, the magma did, that did flow out was only one ninth of what has flown out of the magma chamber on February 8th. So that's why he says that he and the others are thinking that there is a, a high chance that something will happen again very soon. And that's why they're saying this week, because it didn't basically relieve any pressure. This was just something super, super minor, and it has recovered from that already. And that's why they say they expect another dynamic intervention. And also what they're saying, there might be less room for magma to enter the corridor because something always hardens and clocks it. So that is also one of the reasons why they speculate that this could be the reason why there was no eruption. It did stop at Hagafell, right? So if it's the case that there is less room for magma to enter the magma corridor that's leading into the Sutnuka Crater series and from there um, south to Grindavik and also to the north, this could recover and then there will be a large corridor or a large eruption. So right now, he thinks that there is a higher probability that the next event will be an eruption and not a magma intrusion. But also he says as well, there are many uncertainties and it is difficult to predict what will happen because mother nature always surprises us. What's the situation in Grindavik? Grindavik is open for businesses, for residents, for workers and for the press. Press has the same rights now basically as the residents, but it is closed for tourists and for anybody else. So the police chief of Sodorans has said that he doesn't think that there's many people in town right now and there's only limited business activity right now after what happened on the weekend. The only place that's fully open and fully operatable, including the hotels, restaurants, spa and everything is of course my friend the Blue Lagoon. And as I said, check the video in the end screen guys. So this was a quick update about Iceland today. Um, if there is anything else of course i will update you and guys subscribe and click the notification bell so that you get my video once another eruption is happening or if there's something significant happening and of course if there's something else happening around the world and i'm just preparing another video about a very tragic story that's really touching my heart because that area is very dear to my heart um and actually um one of you guys in the comments um you basically mentioned that and, and i think it's it's necessary to, in my opinion, that I make a video about this. I really want to do this. And, and that's probably the next or the one after that will come out. So in the meantime, check out that Blue Lagoon statement in the video in the end screen, because it's like, yeah, what can I say? Check it out and then let's discuss it in the comments. So thank you very much, guys, for watching and thank you for your support, for the supers you're sending me. You guys are absolutely awesome. I really appreciate it and it really helps a lot. And of course, the coffee is on my buymeacoffee.com website and please subscribe there. It's for free. Then you get all the notifications and the link is in the description. And uh, thank you so much, guys. And I hope to see you very, very soon. Bye-bye.